Ladies and gentlemen, what do Falcons do? Rise up! Welcome to another episode of Rise Up Reactions, the show where we talk all things Falcons, NFL, Georgia sports, and really any news going on in the sports world. I'm your host, Dr. Lee Denning. I'm a board-certified family medicine physician practicing in the state of Georgia. And today I wanted to talk about the draft. We've got that coming up about eh, a week and a half or so from the time that I'm making this video. And the Falcons have a lot of needs. Statistically, we were terrible in a lot of categories, both on offense and on defense last year. I'm going to make a separate video about that that hopefully will drop before the draft. But just to be frank, we need a lot of help at a lot of positions. And it really is going to start in the trenches, and it's going to start with the foundational pieces of both sides of the ball. Now, that said, we're in a weird position picking eight overall. Again, I've said in a previous video, I wish we had finished in a position where maybe we're picking fourth or fifth overall. Just didn't happen. And certainly last year was a season where if things go the other way on a couple of games, we could end up picking... Yeah, maybe even first overall, which really would have changed the trajectory of the team. However, this year we have a few things that we need to look for, and I'm going to start on offense and just talk about the things that we potentially need to draft from that perspective. So, according to Pro Football Focus, the things that we need are a quarterback, a guard, and a center, and what they don't say, but what I'm going to add in, because obviously with Calvin Ridley getting suspended and losing Julio and really Russell Gage and all of our talent, we are going to need a wide receiver, too, at some point in this draft. Now, what picks do we have in this year's draft? We have five in the first 82, thanks to a couple of our trades. We have pick number eight overall, 43 overall, 58, which we got from the Julio trade, 74, and then 82, which we got from the Matt Ryan trade. So, what do we need from a pro football focus? Now, according to them, we need a quarterback. I agree. I don't think it needs to be a guy this year. Next year, there's a little bit better talent coming out, guys with a better pedigree. Even if they may not end up being great, they just have, they look better on paper and they look better on the field even this year. CJ Stroud and Bryce Young are those guys for next year. This year, at number eight overall, it's very likely Carolina is going to take a quarterback with the number six overall pick. And right now, all indications are that they like Kenny Pickett. Hello, cat. Uh, Ready? So they like Kenny Pickett, so he's probably not going to be available. So the next available guys are Malik Willis out of Liberty with an ADP of 15.6 and Sam Howell of UNC, current ADP expected to be about 31.2. So what does that mean? That means these guys are a reach almost no matter what we do with this eighth pick. If we really want one of these guys, we need to trade out of this pick and find a way to pick in the middle of the first round and build more draft capital for the future. Not a terrible idea, but if we're going to take a quarterback, I think we need to back off of that idea a little bit and look back further in the draft. So in the second round, again, we have two picks here. Guys that are going in the second round at pick roughly 39 are Desmond Ritter out of Cincinnati and Matt Corral out of Mississippi. Now, Seattle is a quarterback needy team that has two picks ahead of us in the second round. They may trade out of one of those, but right now it's expected that they're going to take one of these two guys or one of the guys that falls to them from the projected first round and again there's not a lot of quarterback needy teams this year but next year is going to be a different story and probably we're going to be bad enough to have a one or two overall pick so again I'm not really enamored by either of these guys I think we need to pass on them and then in the third round the guy that's kind of left over if all the others are taken is Carson Strong Average draft position about 85. You know, it would be something special if we did happen to find a diamond in the rough with him at maybe that 82nd overall pick with Matt Ryan's pick that we got from the trade. Um, that would just kind of be poetic, poetic justice to some degree. But I really don't think we need to do that. There's other positions we need to be focused on for this year. Moving on to wide receiver. Uh, this is a position that is very realistic for us to take. It's also one that I think we need but not the first round. So pick number eight, very likely the way the drafts are looking right now, a wide receiver is not going to be taken prior to us having a shot. So the two guys that look really good on paper and are probably going to go 1A and 1B in some form are going to be Drake London out of USC and then Garrett Wilson out of Ohio State University. Both of them are projected around pick number 12 overall. But, you know, you just never know. But both of them are NFL ready and look like they could be a major difference maker for their team. 
But right now, those positions are a luxury item, and they're not something that we need today. We do need that probably next year, but again, we're not at that point yet. Uh, so if we don't take a guy in the first round, then really there's only one second round guy that I'm interested in, and unfortunately, I think he's going to be gone by the time we get there. And that would be George Pickens, you know, a UGA guy that if he hadn't had an ACL injury would have been a first round, middle of the pack, maybe possibly first receiver taken off the board guy. Um, made a miraculous recovery and was not really super utilized in the SEC Championship, the Orange Bowl, or the National Title Game, but he was still a presence on the field, and, th- and he did pull amazing defenders off of other secondary guys that allowed Georgia to win uh, a couple of those games. So he's a guy I would love to have, but some of the guys that I think are going to be really good and probably are the guys we need to take are in the third round. One of those would be Mechie out of Alabama. He's got an average draft position about 75 right now. I think he would be a phenomenal talent and a guy that we could build on for the future. Uh, Calvin Austin out of Memphis is a halfway decent receiver, probably a little bit of a project, but again, another big body guy to build on. And also Khalil Shaker out of Boise State, another guy that probably is going to be pretty good there. Um, And then finally, one of the guys I think is a late round possibility would be Justin Ross um, out of Clemson, uh, 74 ADP uh, overall. So again, I think he's going to end up falling down a little bit. For whatever reason, he has not done well at the combine, just is falling off of draft boards a little bit. Uh, But that's at wide receiver. Now, what I really think we need to do is take offensive line. Now, Guys that could potentially be there. I have no idea what the teams ahead of us are going to take, but in the first round, we need to be looking at whoever's left out of Evan O'Neill, Iquanu, and Charles Cross. Charles Cross would be the most likely guy, but we do need a tackle, and it would be great to put him at right tackle and replace McGarry, who was not good and has not been good since we drafted him. Cross is supposed to be a top 10 pick overall, and I think he's probably one of the best offensive players we could take with the number eight overall position. Obviously, if O'Neal or Aquanu fell to us by some miracle, I would love to have them almost over anybody else exclusively, but you just never know how that's going to go. In the second round, it's a little murky. I don't know that there's anybody there that we could really get that I like, but Kenyon Green out of Texas A&M is another big body guy with a lot of talent that might be a great plug and play immediate starter, but probably needs a little bit of development. And then you get to the third round, which again is where I think we can do the yeoman's work here and really get some guys for the future. Not guys that may necessarily start right out the gate, but could be potential starters and would be better than what we currently have. Some of these guys include Dylan Parham out of Memphis, Jamari Slayer um, after, out of uh, UGA. I'm a little partial to him. Uh, Kellen Deesh and uh, Donovan West out of Arizona State. Um, Kyle Fortner out of Kentucky. And then later on in the sixth round, a lot of us, or a lot of predictions have us taking Luke Wattenberg out of Washington at center. It's a position that we do need in the future, but you know anybody we get past about the third round is probably not going to be a plug, uh, plug and play starter. They're probably going to be a guy that we have to develop. But you know other guys that might be good, Tyler Smith out of Tulsa. Alec Lindstrom out of Boston College. These are all guys that I think would be decent fits and guys that we could develop or potentially build around in the future. And who knows? Maybe we get some gem out of some guy that's not even listed here. But anyways, what do we really need in the draft? Again, we need a quarterback. We need a wide receiver. We need an offensive line from an offensive perspective. Do we need those guys this year? As far as skill position, no. No. We don't need it. I really hope we don't take a quarterback or wide receiver until past the third round. But knowing the Falcons and knowing that offense is sexy and they're trying to sell tickets and they're a business, who knows what they're going to do. But anyways, Falcons fan, let me know what your comments are down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what we should do from an offensive perspective. I'm going to make a defensive perspective uh, draft video here shortly. But just let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you like the content that I'm putting out there, please consider liking the or hitting the like button and consider subscribing. It would really help the channel grow and would mean a lot to me. And as always, rise up.